we're gonna talk about the different type of assets that you can build, and then I'm gonna show examples of each. And I'm going to use uh, a little bit of the existing little platform game that I made here uh, to show you uh, the different types of tiles since they're already constructed. And then we're gonna work in the other file as far as actually building them. Um, let me, and this is gonna actually make sound, and I don't want it to make sound. So let me export and test real quick. And I'm going to show you the three sections of, of graphics in the picture processing unit, which is what I showed you at the very beginning, showing you the palettes. Okay, I'm going to pause the actual game, so that way we're not hearing the music. Um, and I'm going to look at the picture processing unit viewer, which is, this is one of the great things about FCUX versus our, our sort of built-in uh, quick and dirty emulator. Um, so what you're seeing right now is all the graphics that are loaded. And on the left, you see all the sprite graphics that are loaded. And on the right, you see all the background graphics that are loaded. And you can actually see how this screen is 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 sort of you know, created using these building blocks. These are your Legos. Here is your screen that you built with those Legos. And here is all the background uh, palettes that are loaded. And here is all the sprite palettes that are loaded. So you can kind of see that your player is actually this right here is made up of these colors. And this area, you know, of the ground is made up of this sub palette. And this tree is made up of this sub palette. And these stones are made up of this sub palette. And your HUD uses this last sub palette. So, um, so this is really neat. Uh, what I want to show you is the difference between and where we place uh, uh, tile assets, screen specific tile assets, and then path tiles um, and the HUD tiles. So basically, this side of the this picture processing unit viewer is all of your background tiles, and this is all your sprite tiles. And in your background tiles, it's really split up into four sections. And you can imagine an, an imaginary line right here after three rows. If you remember, if we go back over here and we go to create a new main tile set, it's three rows of tiles. When we look over here at FCUX, these first three rows of tiles are the tile set. This next, this fourth row is the screen specific uh, row of tiles. And why we use the screen specific row of tiles is screen specific row of tiles can be mixed and matched uh, with I could change out the tile set and keep the screen specific tile set there so I can get some variety as far as the tiles that are mixed together. And we'll show you why that's cool in a minute. Underneath that, you have four rows for paths. And a lot of people, we're going to show you how to make like a dirt path and water and things like that. But that's not all they're limited to. For instance, this first path here made these clouds. And what's cool about it is you can get really diverse shapes and sizes and things like that using paths. Whereas if I was trying to create a cloud like that, it would take a ton of tile set space. But it only took one row of eight by eight tiles in order to create all different size of these clouds and this this uh treetop is actually the second path go being put through this uh this sub uh, palette right here um and the same kind of thing like you can see these different shapes that i got for the treetops and uh, it was very easy for me to construct and we're going to take a look at paths in a second um and so these four i i don't i only have two path types uh so you can imagine two more would fit right here and then here is where i have my hud data and by default, the HUD data gives you enough information for all the letters, all the numbers, all the punctuation, and about a row of extra graphic space to do things with. And so we worked for a very long time on trying to figure out the right amount of tiles to use for what purpose. And we found again and again that this scheme worked the best for most cases in most games that you would want to create with a tool like Nestmaker. Unless you want to have no text in your game whatsoever, no HUD anywhere, um, you know, this is probably the bare minimum you can get away with and create a, a HUD. Um, and, you know, similarly, uh, you know, we found that we really liked having control over 8x8 eight eight tile graphics, but we couldn't, but it made there be four times the amount of data than if we were using 16x16 16 16 tile HUD graphics. But we liked that sort of control, so sort of a, a a trade-off, uh, a compromise was we can make these four path tiles so we can get sort of eight by eight detail and these, these shapes for things that were made modularly. And there's a lot of those types of things in games that are made modularly um, while still preserving uh, the detail, but also not taking up the space in the, um, in the actual output data 
for all those eight by eight tiles, which there's four times as many. If you do the math, um, you know, it takes four eight by eight tiles to make one 16 by 16 tile. So to make a screen, it's literally four times the amount of data. Um, so anyway, as far as the, the, the tile set versus the screen specific tile set, take a look at what happens. I'm going to unpause it real quick and I'm going to go down into the dungeon and I want you to pay attention to this row right here. This, this, this row that starts, starts with the spikes. So I'm going to set the speed to normal. Um, unpause it. And I'm going to go down the ladder. Now, what you're going to notice is, I'm going to set, I'm going to pause it again. What you notice is all the tiles changed and this, the, the sub palettes changed. However, the, the screen specific tiles did not change. I'm using the same screen specific tiles, whether I'm using tile set zero or tile set one, which allows me to do things like put this bounce tile on either or put these spikes on either or put a doorway on either so these are like common tiles that i might see anywhere in the world uh, whether i'm in a cave or i'm on the overworld or i'm in a dungeon or whatever these are common tiles that i'm going to see you know wherever i am now you have 10 screen specific tile sets in a bank and six actual tile sets that's a lot of mixing and matching and one of the examples that i like to give is think about a graveyard you know obviously you'll probably have a full graveyard tile set if you're making like an adventure game or an rpg but what if you wanted graves like one grave in the forest and a small little graveyard in one of the villages right what i could do is instead of putting graves in a tile set i could put my graves in a screen specific tile set and then if i'm in the graveyard i have access to graves but also if i'm in a forest i have access to these graves and also if i'm in the town i have access to these graves so um so that's the difference between tile sets and screen specific tile sets and how you can use them sort of in tandem uh, to, to create more versatile options when you're constructing screens. So that's that. Let's, um, so I'm going to close out of this and let's jump back to the game that I'm constructing. And, uh, you know, I want to show you how to create, um, how to create tiles and screen specific tiles and how to create paths and how to start working with them a little bit. So that's the difference between them. So if I load up uh, this tile set right here, um, and I'm going to put this through my main grassland tile set. And the other thing is I'm going to make a just ground tile right here. And I'm probably going to use this right here. Oh, I'll use this. Um, I'm going to tile fill this. So usually what I'll do with ground or with this first tile is I'll just leave it as whatever the default tile. I think I said that already. Um, I want this to be the default tile right here. It's kind of like the grass tile and just give it a little bit of character there we go um so that's my grass tile i got a spike tile i've got a tree i can put in and i'm going to start making some assets out of this main tile set and let me save that and how i do that is i go to uh my graphics bank one and i'll go to assets now you've got three graphics banks and we were looking at the graphics if we go back over here i've got zero one two three four and five which are in bank one I've got seven, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, which are in bank two, and twelve through seventeen, which are in bank three. All right, so um, I'm right now working on tile set zero, uh, and I could look at any of the first six. This is tile set one, which was just black. This is tile set two. This is tile set three, etc. If I look at tile set one, what I can do is I can create tiles that also have. I can also sort of store their uh, their palette data, their their attribute data, um, and I want I want this tile, this grass tile, to use this first attribute, this first sub palette, and I can also set a collision type. And for this tile, I want it to use null walkable. I just want it to be a straight up walkable tile, and I'm going to call it grass, and I'm going to save new. Now. You'll notice I have a little plus sign here. That means there's more stuff here. Right now, you can see I still have assets as a, as a over like overarching assets selected and you notice it still says save new that means if i make changes like if i do this and i set the tile type and i save new i'm making a new asset if i want to edit the grass i need to click on the grass and you'll notice now i have grass selected and it doesn't say save new it says update it's letting me know that once i like if i change it to this sub palette instead and i hit update or this one 
hit update. I'm not saving a new one. I'm actually replacing that one. If I want to make new tiles again, I need to click on assets. And now I see save new. So I'm not overwriting the data for that one. Um, so I'll get the, the spikes. And this is a player death uh, asset. So and I'll call this spikes. Oops, spikes and I'll save new and you see I see they appeared over here and it saved it with the collision data and the attribute data um, and I can also make a tree by making a two by two asset I'm gonna make this solid and I'm gonna use this sub palette and I'm going to make a tree and each one of these I need to set to solid because I might not want them all to be the same like if I had a castle entrance or something like that maybe one of these tiles is a uh, warp to screen and it's a doorway and the other ones are solid so I want to be able to have control tile by tile also I could you know make a, a asset that, that used multiple um, sub palettes so for instance I want this to still be green like that so it matches the other ones but maybe like I want the brown here to be a different color than the brown there I don't know uh, it doesn't really matter because like this one I want to be in shadow and this one I want to be lighter and you can get creative on, on how you might utilize this uh, but hopefully that gives you the idea of let's change this I'm gonna I'm just gonna have it use I'm gonna have them both use this okay so that's how I can you know make use of different attributes for each subtile and different collision data for each subtile I'm gonna call this tree save new now I've got a bunch of assets that were created with the first tile set um, I don't have any graphics in the second tile set but if I did I can make tiles that were created with the second tile set if I want to update the screen specific tile sets I just click where it says main tile sets and these are my screen specific tile sets now I don't have any but if I did I could make new assets that would be created out of the screen specific and they'd show up under my assets as well and I just created them the exact same way I just created uh, the other assets now to utilize those when I go to overworld and I would pick on a screen and you can see by default it picked my tile set zero it picked my screen specific zero don't worry about paths it picked my first possible palette type and now I can actually start placing these assets if I had screen specific tile sets that were in the screen zero that I made they'd show up here too and I could literally start placing assets and, and we're gonna take a look at how to uh, develop a screen but before we do that I want to show you one more type of asset and that's paths paths are really kind of cool they're single lines um, of, of 8 by 8 pixels 8 8 by 128 pixels I should say if I go to graphics bank 1 and I go to path info um, I don't have any paths loaded here so let me go ahead and load up the paths uh, a default path here so if I go to pixel editor I open up I go to nest maker beta assets graphics this is a default path layout it's a really ugly path layout and I'll show you why but um, if I were to view this path through Let's see this um, let's look at it through this and I'm gonna make this dark kind of a, a path or maybe a brown that's gonna be the same color as my skin so I'll use brown so what we're looking at is the the uh, path is broken up into 8 by 8 pixel areas so this is a full-on path this is the top left of a path this is the top of a path this is the top right of a path this is the left of a path this is the right bottom left bottom bottom right and these are the interior corners and this is the alternating version of this so if it's an even number tile it's this if it's an odd number tile it's this um, and it's checkerboarded so on the next row it'll be reversed and that just gives me more uh, um, sort of versatility and more visual interest on the screen when I'm working with paths to do it that way so this is an example of a really really crappy it's gonna look really bad when I put it together path but I'm going to copy this I wanted to make it really obvious what was the top left, what was the top right, etc. Uh, if I open graphic assets and I go to path tile zero, I'm going to paste it into the top left corner. And I'm going to save that as my path tiles. And now if I go to path info, you'll see I actually have one created. And I said I wanted to use that right there. So this sub palette. I could also make this. Um, let's say I want to make it stone you know like I could if I wanted to make this 
different uh, collision so I can make it solid and then if I ran into it uh, anywhere it would be solid if I make it null it looks like a walking path or I might you know make it water like I might make it look like that and then it's water um, I'm gonna use it as a dirt path for right now and again this looks horrible I would actually if I were doing this for real I would get in and I would ref I would use edit to refine the edges and if I do this you can kind of see right here it needs to curl up so I would get the brown color and I would curl it up or and or I would use green to sort of make that not look as uniform like that and then I'd save it and then I'd have to adjust this the uh, tiles that are adjacent to that so you can see now I'd have to adjust this one and this one and I can get a more organic look that way um, for right now I'm not that worried about it I'm just gonna call this grassland tiles and hit save um, so now that's and, and I made it null and walkable and I chose this sub palette now inside that let's take a look sorry if I look at path info I've got grassland tiles and here they are and I can edit it and hit save again um, so that's the three different types of tiles that we're going to be looking at when we're constructing a screen, which we're going to look in the next step.